This video is brought to you by a huge mountain of drugs. Ran into a really salty player the other day, and it was due to this deck, Damia, Sage of Stone. I stole the deck list, and we're going to see how it performs today. Up against Mirko Vosk, Shadrick Silverquill, and Kaga. Uh, we've got a bit of ramp. We can go Sensei's top and spin it on turn two as well, so yeah, we'll keep that. Just notice that we're up against patron of the channel, Drug Mountain, by the way. Occasionally sponsors a video for us with his huge mountain of drugs. A uh, nature's claim for us can blow something up. We'll just go for, I think there's a tricycle landing here. Or, hmm, yeah, we want Sensei's top, don't we? So let's go Sensei's Divining top with an untapped dual land here. Uh, Tropical Island will do. A Marble Diamond from Drug Mountain. And then the Demir player just playing another land and tapping out. That is a three visit, so... Uh, does it matter which one we go for here? We'll drop a land. I don't think it particularly matters. We'll go for Thought Vessel because three visits can grab us a tap land. So we can maybe do that next turn. Let's spin. Uh, we'll do Sensei's Divining Top at the end of Merkel Vosk's turn because that might dictate to us which cards we want to put on top by the time we've seen other cards from our opponents. Kager going for... Huh, that's an extra planar lens. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to have to eat a nature's claim, because they'll have six mana next turn, and if they've got any kind of free counter magic, then we'll encourage them to use it. But yeah, very low curve in this deck. I did show you all the deck list in the previous video, and you'll obviously see it in this one as well, if you like. Um, lots of big bombs at the top end, but at the bottom end, it's all uh, ramp and removal. Very much like our Queen Marquesa deck that... I play on this channel sometimes. A Sword of Feast and Famine from Drug. And now it is Demir Mana being held up, not tapping out this time. Oh, and I totally forgot to spin the top there. So what are we doing? Um, I think... Yeah, we can spin it now and still go Nature's Claim in three visits. Okay, there's a Damnation, an Uro. Uh, Windfall, I don't think I'm too eager for, so... We'll go Windfall, Damnation, and the Uro we can draw into. And then we know there's no land on the top as well, so we can shuffle those things away. Not going to get an extra land with the Uro. Could bring in an untapped land here again, but I do want to get the Triome into play, I think. So, yeah, we'll go for the Triome. I'm always paranoid about being desperate for mana and drawing into a tap land, so... Yeah, get the tap land out of the way here, and then blowing up the extra planar lens. And now a Jushi Apprentice. Uh, three mana tap draw. Nine or more cards in hand, flip it. And it's five mana tap. Target player draws X, where X is the number of cards in their hand. All right. And then we see the first commander of the game, Shadrick Silverquill. And then we go through to the beginning of combat. So uh, the Shadricks is going to trigger... And they decide to put a plus counter on this thing, so... Uh, yeah, I think they might have gone for the card draw there as well. Once again, the Demir player just dropping a land and not doing anything. Not going to spin the top here because uh, we want to go Uro and hold up the Assassin's Trophy for something. <laughs> Alright, there's Mana Crypt. Yeah, we're actually missing our colours, unfortunately. Because uh, we could have gone for Coma. Not going to go for Damia just yet. I want people to empty their hands a little bit more first. So let's throw out a Mana Crypt. And then we can play out Uro. Titan of Nature's Wrath. And uh, yeah, I suppose we could spin Sensei's top now. Try and get ourselves an extra land. And then we can spin it again after we've got a card with Uro. Alright, there's plenty of lands there. Uh, so uh, let's go for the Breeding Pool so we can go... Uh, Nurturing Peatland, Mana Drain, Breeding Pool. Uro is sacrificed because it wasn't escaped. And then we reveal the Breeding Pool, put that into play, not going to shock it in. And then with the Floating Mana, before we lose that from the Crypt, I'll spin the top again and we'll look at one extra card. And it is Nature's Law this time, so... Uh, yeah, I think I'd like the Mana Drain. So why don't we go Land, Nature's Law, Mana Drain. And then again, holding up Assassin's Trophy for either the Sword or the Shadricks, I think. I think we can leave Shadricks alone. Hold up Assassin's Trophy for something more frightening. 
And now it's a Thespian stage from the blue player, but just passing the turn, so <laughs> the two blue players playing on everyone else's turn, seemingly. So there goes, Sword of Feast and Famine onto the Shadrix. And you would expect them to tap out here into something, but not doing that. Again, doing the plus counter thing, I assume. Uh, yeah, it's plus counters and drawing a card, so they go up to six in hand. And swing it in towards us, so that forces our hand, we'll go Assassin's Trophy onto the sword. Uh, that successfully goes down, so they will get an extra land. Grabbing a planes, which makes total sense, because there is an Urborg in place, so no one's going to be worrying about black mana this game. Not until we get knocked out, anyway. Not worthy that there is a Vault of the Archangel in play as well as a Castle Lockthwain. And then a Phyrexian Arena. Yeah, still pretty early in the game, turn 5, so that should still be able to do some work for him if it sticks. And again, the Demir player just not doing much of anything here, unfortunately. We lost the Mana Crypt flip. I think we have to go for Coma this turn. Um, yeah, it probably gets countered, but that's not counter magic that's going on Darmia at least. So we'll hold up a mana for the Sensei's top and let's go for Coma. Holding up the Urborg as mana for the Sensei's top as opposed to the Thought Vessel because that's more likely to go down than the land. And Jushi Apprentice is going to draw. Takes them up to six, so three cards away from flipping that around. For those of you who didn't see the last video, you really should look at it to put this into context. The uh, yeah, This deck was referred to over and over again as a CEDH deck, which... Uh, yeah, I've actually looked at the list now, and it absolutely isn't. It's certainly a high-powered deck with lots of expensive cards in it, but... No, definitely not CEDH. No one blowing up or countering our coma, so we make it through to the blue player's turn, seemingly. Or apparently not. Looks like there's a Swords incoming. It is Path to Exile, with no artwork. There we are. That is coming from Drug Mountain. So, seeing the back of the coma straight away. Like I said, still early in the game, so I'm assuming that we're going to be seeing a lot of removal yet. Uh, let's go for an island, because we do have Mana Drain in hand, so... Uh, how much mana do we have? 3, 6, and 9. Darmia costs 4, 5, 6, 7. So we might be able to hold up double blue. I think we will for the Mana Drain. Tapping the Flooded Strand for Black Mana, thanks to the Urborg and a Dragon's Horde coming into play for the blue player. Renegade Doppelganger. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can have it become a copy of it until the end of the turn. So that won't help you with ETBs and stuff, but static abilities and big bodies that can swing in is uh, yeah one means of cloning. That's quite interesting. Now the Shadrix player being swung in at with a 3-4 Jushi. And Shadrix making it round to his turn again, so Phyrexian Arena going to draw an extra card. And there is a mixture of basics in here, so I always point it out, but the basic planes and the snow-covered planes being mixed up, which sometimes suggests that Field of the Dead is in the deck. So for any of you newer players who don't know that, it's something to be wary of. A Knight's Whisper was having a slight debate with some people online about the black card draw spells, and some people were saying that they don't like Signing Blood and Knight's Whisper because it's, uh, well, it's not good enough, basically. Two mana for two cards, but I always very much rate these cards. Yes, it's only two cards, but it's also only two mana as well, and I think one card per mana is pretty good. Anyway, Adeline, Resplendent Cathar coming into play, a very underrated commander, and... Well, the more we see it in play, the more that will convince people, I imagine. So now it's plus counters being put on the Demir player's creatures, and they're going to make an Inkling over here, seemingly. Yep, so there's a 2-1 Inkling. And then Shadrick's going in at the blue player, who is at 44 life, thanks to our nature's law. Adeline triggers on any creature swinging in, so we each get a 1-1. Now we'll see if Merkel Vosk has any more luck. Going straight through to the second main... Yeah, and just deciding to scoop there, they must have kept a hand with a bunch of big spells in it and um, couldn't cast any of them with four lands in play. That's just keeping a bad hand, quite frankly. You typically want to have some ramp in your opening hand. Anyway, we'll go for the Sensei's top now. Uh, Alright, <laughs> Sublime Epiphany. Not having the best of luck with the lands here at the moment. Shuffled all of them away. Uh, there's Seasons Past. Don't want to do that just yet because Uro's in the bin, so let's go for Sublime Epiphany there. 
Seasons Pass, Force, Drawing to Sublime Epiphany. And then we get bolted by the Crypt again. Know what we're drawing into, let's get our commander into play. The blue player is F6 and Shadrix is holding up um, priority here with three mana, so it could be Generous Gift or something like that. We've got Counter Magic back up, so hopefully our Darmia will survive the turn cycle here. But Shadrix still holding up priority at the end step. Potentially going to wait for some removal from the blue player. And there we see the commander, Kager the Tide Star. So when that dies, gain control of a creature. Yeah, we'll allow it. Hopefully we'll be able to... Can we bounce that? Yeah, return it to its owner's hand and make a copy of it. Um, Dragon's Horde will trigger. I'm assuming that the doppelganger will become a copy of it. No, oh, actually, I didn't foresee that. Yeah, yeah, should have thought about that. They're likely going to steal our Darmia away here. I mean, we can still bounce it back with the Sublime Epiphany. Not worthy that they killed off the Renegade Doppelganger, so they won't be able to do that again. We're just going to have to go for Sublime Epiphany next turn. Maybe should have countered that with the Mana Drain, but I'm assuming that the Ozov player has more removal, so yeah, maybe our Darmia will be put back in the Command Zone. Now we're taking three damage from Jushi Apprentice. Uh, during the main phase, a flawless maneuver from Shadrix, gaining indestructible, so probably just going for a board wipe here. Okay, it's Oubliette instead. So if that gets rid of the Darmia, then we've got... No, it's going after the Kaga, luckily. I was going to say it'd be particularly difficult to get rid of it, because we'd have to bounce the Oubliette to bring the Darmia back into play over here, or would it come back into play under its owner's control? Yeah, it just phases out, so I think it would stay in play over here. And then we'd have to get it back from the Kager player, but not to worry. Because that hasn't happened here. Shadrix is triggering again. So targeting us this time, plus counter on all of our stuff, and they get an inkling. Oh, giving us an inkling, actually, and putting a plus counter on all of their indestructible stuff. So the Adeline triggers and brings in some more things. Uh, the commander goes into the left, as does Adeline, which is now a 9-5. We get an inkling, a couple of human tokens, and then it's a human token each. Uh, the other human token goes into the left as well. Uh, so I think we're just best leaving the inkling out and ready to chump block the Adeline, really. Not sure why they went for flawless maneuver there, in all honesty. Maybe, I don't know. I don't actually know why they went for that. Be nice to see them tap out into Vault of the Archangel here. Alright, Darmia blocking the 2-2, so that will go... Oh, actually, it won't go down because it's indestructible. But our Darmia will stay in play as well. And now going for Dramatic Finale, which is giving creature tokens an anthem effect. Whenever one or more non-token creatures you control dies, get an Inkling token. But it only triggers once a turn. I didn't really think much of that, thanks to it triggering only once a turn. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it does here. Winning the flip, this time with Mana Crypt. And we're drawing into Force of Vigor, which we can't play out for free. I think we're just holding up Sublime Epiphany and Mana Drain here. Uh, that is 8 mana. So we can hold that up and still go for the Sensei's Divining Top. Our opponent's only going to draw 2 extra cards with the Darmia. They go up to 6 next turn anyway. So it's actually only 1 extra card. Um, so I'm going to hold up the Sublime Epiphany and try and counter something as well as bouncing that. Potentially pretty risky because the blue player could get into counter magic. But we've got Mana Drain to counter a counter. So up to 7 cards as opposed to 6. And they could go up to 9 here actually, couldn't they? Remove a gold counter from this to draw a card. And then it's that thing. And they can actually flip this around. I don't know if it's worth it to do that for them. Certainly keeps them in cards obviously. Felwar Stone. They will be able to add blue mana thanks to us. Deciding to swing in the Darmia towards the Adeline. So uh, I'm assuming that they're aiming to get that killed off now that they've got the card draw from it. We've got a 3-4 coming in towards us again. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to block with the Inkling just in case the Adeline wants to swing in towards us again. Alright, just taking the uh, Darmia damage. So that is commander damage still, even though it's not us doing it. Doubt we'll be killing off our opponent with Darmia damage, but you never know. And then the blue player, unfortunately, holding up counter magic, potentially, so... Over to the Orzov player's turn, and we'll see if we can counter and bounce and all that stuff. 
for Action Arena continuing to draw extra cards. It is draw, lose a life, and plus counters. So they go down to 24, five cards in hand, and it's a plus counter on our Inkling. Shadrick's going into the blue player again, as is Adeline. 4-3 Inkling at us, some 3-3 three, three humans at us, and a 2-2 two, two human into the left, a 2-2 two, two human in at us as well, so really spreading it around. Adeline triggers again. Could counter the Adeline trigger, but I'm assuming our opponent's going to want to cast spells after this, so... Yeah, how much of this can we take? Yeah, that's what we've got coming in at us. Four damage here, nine damage here, and then four in the air. So that is 17 points of damage. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to block the 4-3, unfortunately. And then does the blue player have a means of bouncing all the attackers here? That would be really good. Oh, evacuation. All right. Yeah, I don't mind that. That does give us the Darmia back, so we actually save our Sublime Epiphany here. Doesn't give them back their commander either. Our opponent's in a tricky spot now because he's correctly assuming that we've got a bunch of counter magic held up. So there is the Shadrick Silver Quill. I think we will take a free 5 mana, putting that back into the command zone, which is relevant up against black players. Could always reanimate stuff. And then there is Adeline as well, which I think is going to be too much of a headache for us to deal with. So we'll counter a spell, return an online permanent. Unfortunately can't create a token, but we can go for target player draws a card. So counter Adeline, bounce the Phyrexian Arena, and we will draw. And we actually know what's on top. It is Seasons Past, so uh, we can spin the Sensei's Divining Top. That will hopefully really slow down the token player's advantage there. Uh, yep, look at the top three with the Sensei's Top. All right, now it's Strip Mine, Cyclonic Rift. Uh... Yeah, I don't have any counter magic left for the Darmia, unfortunately. I imagine that the Orzhov player has a means of getting rid of our Darmia. Maybe should have held on to the Mana Drain. Yeah, let's drop a land next turn. Let's go Cyclonic Rift. Um, yeah, let's drop a land next turn. I just want to try and make sure we might go for Seasons Past and get the counter magic back into our hands. So, yeah, I'm going to just drop a land next turn and try and help that chance along. Losing at the Mana Crypt flip once again, so we're down to 14. I'm not sure if there's any life gain in this deck. Get the 5 mana from the Mana Drain, thanks to um, going for the Shadricks. So if we drop Strip Mine, we go green, green. Yeah, and we're, we are struggling on colours, unfortunately. So we can still get out the Darmia, but we won't be able to hold up the mana for the Mana Drain. So instead, I'm just going to go for the Seasons Past. And just setting ourselves up for the next turn here. We'll fill our hand either way. Uh, return any number of cards with different mana values. So we'll take a land. Uh, there's only one one drop. A couple of two drops. Do we want Assassin's Trophy or some ramp? Oh no, we definitely want Mana Drain, don't we? The Uro. And Sublime Epiphany. And then we could play out Uro here. But hmm, we won't have the double blue mana because we've got to go green on one of our blue lands. Yeah, we are struggling on the colours here. Let's just spin the top again. All right, there we have ourselves Abrupt Decay again, Cyclonic Rift, and we've got Hull Breaker Horror on the way. So I will grab the Cyclonic Rift, I think. And yeah, this is what Sultai decks do. Just drag the game out as long as they can, as we definitely saw in the previous video. I think we got up to like turn 19 or something crazy. That evacuation really saved us there because I think the mono blue player kind of has to focus on the Shadricks a little bit here, thanks to that oubliette. Uh, okay, going for Acquire. Search for an artifact. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's fast mana they're after, really, isn't it? Yeah, we can blow up any artifact that they go after, I think. I don't think there's any indestructible stuff in here. Yep, it is the Sol Ring that they were aiming for. Oh, there's Cabal Coffers. We do have a Strip Mine, but don't have the chance to blow that up before they activate it. So there's the Phyrexian Arena. We can blow that up with Force of Vigor. Can go for our own Sol Ring and the Phyrexian Arena if we want to. Our opponents know that we have Counter Magic in hand, so maybe treading carefully here. There's the Shadrix again, so gonna let that down. They will draw an extra card, but we can always bounce the... Shadricks with Sublime Epiphany if we like. And then through to the beginning of combat, Drug goes in order to put Shadricks trigger on the stack. 
targeting us, so it's plus counters on all of our creatures. And they go back up to six cards in hand. I've got Leyline of Anticipation in my deck for Darmia so that we can play her at instant speed, and I do miss it when we don't have it. Not that we need Darmia in play at this point. So holding on to whatever they've got, um, let's go for Strip Mine onto that, first of all. And now the Saw Ring being tapped down for whatever reason. Ah, oh, Thespian Stage becoming a copy of it. Yep, yeah, and there's an Urborg in play. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Either way, we're only getting rid of one Strip Mine. And then we'll go for the Force of Vigor. So uh, get rid of the Sol Ring, get rid of the Phyrexian Arena as well. And we don't have the double blue held up anymore, so it is Generous Gift. That goes on to our Mana Crypt. Uh, yeah, so that does happen, that goes down. I mean, we're getting bolted by it constantly anyway, but we've gone down three mana here, unfortunately. And then let's spin Sensei's top again. Alright, finally getting into lands. There's a Consecrated Sphinx. Could get into even more mana here, but... Uh, yeah, we get a blue mana with this. Yeah, I can get a Demir mana. So, yeah, we'll go for the Consecrated Sphinx next turn. Draw into that. Throw out the Verdant Catacombs. We are going to... Hmm. No, we don't have to shuffle away the lands just yet. Because I do want to get into those, and we'll get into them on the blue player's turn. So throw ourselves out a Consecrated Sphinx. And if we're forced to crack the land for Mana Drain Mana, then so be it. So Consecrated Sphinx lands, and it's over to the blue player who's going to have a surplus of black mana over there. Not going to be blocking anything anyway, so not with the elephant at least. So we'll go in at the blue player, knock him down to 20. So the blue player draws back up to 7, and we will draw our two lands here. Uh, and there we see a Cyclonic Rift. Uh, that is just for two mana, so going on to the Oubliette. I'd rather counter whatever they're doing with Kyger, to be honest. Yeah, it might be that the Oubliette goes back onto the Consecrated Sphinx this time. Um, yeah, like I said, they know we have counter magic, so I'm hoping that whatever they do here, abusing Kyger and the legendary rule, I'm assuming, never been up against one of these decks. Yeah, right of replication, so we're going to have to counter that one, I think. I'm assuming that the Orzhov player doesn't have any removal, although they know that we have Mana Drain, so maybe forcing us to use it here instead of using their own removal. So right of replication, hopefully getting countered here, and it is. And ending the turn with a Wayfarer's Bauble. They tap down the Felwar Stone Mana, so can afford to crack that here, and they do. Get through to the draw step with Consecrated Sphinx, so either continuing to hold on to that removal. Uh, they had four mana held up, so they probably don't have instant speed removal, actually. They certainly have the Oubliette in hand still. Just clearing more lands off the top. And there's the Oubliette again. Okay, that's really good. Once again, going on the Kager. <laughs> and there's Elspeth, Sun's Champion, so that is likely the end of the Consecrated Sphinx, because they can minus down. And that's exactly what they do, so taking that down to one loyalty, and down goes Consecrated Sphinx. Got four cards out of it, though. They are going for an Inkling and plus counters. So giving themselves an Inkling to block and protect against the Elspeth. And we go down to 11, because we take two commander damage from the Shadrix. Uh, so we'll have two, four, six, eight, nine mana this turn. Yeah, I think I have to go for the Sensei's top. Alright, just a bunch of lands on top anyway, so um, we don't have a means of shuffling, unfortunately. So we might as well just go land, land, signet. Drawing into things in the wrong order, unfortunately. We do get mana from the mana drain, though. That's only four mana this time, though. Uh, we can go for Sublime Epiphany, maybe, and bounce that token out of the way. Yeah, we're... We're going down pretty quickly anyway. We're going to have to gain a bit of life with Uro, I think. So we'll play the Uro. And then go Sublime Epiphany. We will counter a triggered ability. Return an online permanent. Create a token. And target player draws a card. Um, we're going to counter the escape clause. So that the Uro stays in play. Bounce the Inkling token. Choose the Uro. We'll only keep one, but we'll still get the triggers from that. And then choose ourselves to draw a card to clear that land off. And then to the legendary rule, we have to keep the original one. 
but those triggers still go on the stack even though we don't keep them. So now it's three life and draw a card and we can put a land into play. So let's go for the uh, Dream Root Cascade. And then three life, draw another card. Okay, getting into Mana Vault this time. Um, it can be, uh, we'll just go for an island. Yeah, filling up on lands unfortunately. We haven't made a land for the turn either, so let's throw out Nurturing Peatland because that can draw us a card. We'll go through to combat and try and get rid of the Elspeth. And we do successfully manage to take care of her. Um, how's about... Do we need to get down Demir's Signet? I don't think so, really. Um, we'll go for the Mana Vault, and then we're just holding up the Nature's Claim, really, as well as Spinning Sensei's Top. And we've got the Nurturing Peatland as well, which I dare say I'm going to crack. So not too close on commander damage, thankfully. We are currently at 8 commander with Shadrix alone. Um, yeah, and Shadrix's managing to keep the Kaga out of play. Uro might keep us in this, thanks to the life gain. Mystic Sanctuary going on to the Cyclonic Rift. We don't have any counter magic anymore, and they can afford the Rift. Drawing a card with Dragon's Horde as well. And Kaga just going through to the end step, so it looks as though gonna wait on the Cyclonic Rift until after our turn is done. They're gonna have to hope that we don't have any counter magic, although they might have some of their own. Shadrix with card draw and plus counters over here again. Hasn't had to make many difficult decisions with that, thankfully. There's always been a player without creatures in play for the plus counters. Anyway, we are going to eat two damage from the Shadrix again, going up to ten commander. Yep, there's Austere Command, so it's all artifacts and all creatures, mana value three or less. Uh, let's look at the Sensei's top first of all. We might get into Counter Magic for that, although I was hoping that we'd be able to hold on to it for the Rift. Get into our own Oubliette. Lightning Greaves, Shieldred could be useful. So uh, why don't we draw into... Uh, hmm, Lightning Greaves might be better... We've got Oubliette, Shieldred and Lightning Greaves. We can draw into the Shieldred with the Uro if we play it again. And that would obviously be useful with the Lightning Greaves as well. And we're going to have to draw a card here anyway. So let's draw what we just went for with the Sensei's Top. We'll draw into Sensei's Top during our next turn. Get into the Lightning Greaves, of course. Probably should have tapped down the Mana Vault for Mana into that, actually, because... Um, we were going to lose it anyway, not that it matters, we've only got Nature's Claim held up now. So, it comes round to our turn. And this one, two or more opponents might as well get that in now, because an opponent will be knocked out sooner or later. Let's go for Uro. And then we do, of course, get the triggers. We are not going to sacrifice Uro, because we have just escaped it. But we've managed to ramp a couple of lands with this thing, so pretty happy with it. We needed to empty our hand as best we could of lands, because it's... Yeah, that's pretty bad when Damia's wanting to come down. Although we've kept our hand pretty full without her. Throw ourselves out of Lightning Greaves as well. And then, as much as I'd love to go in at the blue player, it will encourage them to go for the Cyclonic Rift, which... Uh, it's not necessarily the worst thing if they go for Cyclonic Rift here. We can go Uro yet again and end the turn with at least a permanent or two in play. But let's go through to the Orzhov player, and yeah, second thoughts, I am actually going to go for the blue player here. Problem is, if we get rid of Drug Mountain, then we get rid of the Oubliette as well, although we're about to get into our own, aren't we? But yeah, I'm going to encourage the blue player to go for the Rift right now. So that allows us to dump a forest into play. Alright, and just deciding to take the damage, that's really good, so we get them down to 13, we're up to 17, thanks to the life gain. Um, not going to throw out Shieldred, because I don't want my opponents to know I've got it, so we'll go Demir Signet. And then it is the Sensei's Divining Top again, and we are emptying our hand, ready for the Damia again. No reason for the Oubliette, so uh, yeah, leaving it there I think. Also, if we manage to get rid of the blue player, then... I can go Oubliette onto this thing instead and take the triggers away and hopefully take the card drawer away because this has done a lot of card drawing for our opponent. Not going for the Cyclonic Rift at the end of our turn is curious. 
We know they've got it in hand because they fetch for this during the upkeep, so they did draw into it last turn. A midnight clock from our opponent, and they can put counters on that, although can't get all the way up to 12 with it just yet. And we've got the nature's claim for that anyway, although I'd rather they didn't gain 4 life. There's the Jushi Apprentice. Yep, just an hour counter going on the midnight clock. A couple of those. So keeping hold of the Cyclonic Rift for whatever reason. Obviously wanting us to dedicate more to the board before going for that. I'm hoping that Drug Mountain is thinking the same thing I'm thinking and wanting to gang up on the mono blue player, but he's up against a Sultai player that can draw a bunch of cards, so... Uh, not sure what his thoughts are here. Not sure if the Shieldred would have encouraged my opponent to go for the Cyclonic Rift. Um, yeah, maybe it would have done. Ooh, there's an Elish Norn. Not getting rid of our Uro, thankfully. It does buff the Shadricks, though, and commander damage starts to become more of an issue. So I wonder if we are forced into the Oubliette with that. There's 10 commander damage from Shadricks on the blue player as well. 12 on us. Hopefully, if we go for Oubliette onto this thing, it'll phase out, and then we can... Ah, they've given themselves an ink token. I was going to say, I'd like to encourage them to sacrifice their Praetor with ours. Uh, they're at least going in at the blue player, so we might be on the same wavelength here. The Inkling is a 5-4. And the Midnight Clock goes up to four counters on it. We draw into Wind Grace's Judgment. Forgot to spin the top there, actually, so that's pretty lucky. Destroy a target non online permanent that player controls. Um, yeah, so that's Elish Norn and this thing, really. Saves our Nature's Law for now, or Nature's Claim. So we do that before combat so that we can deal more damage with Uro and take them out. Dramatic finale triggers, so that does get them an inkling. I'm looking at going for Oubliette onto the Shadricks anyway. Uh, this has Swamp Walk, so we're going to cast it here regardless. Got one, two, three for the Oubliette. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't have enough quite for Shieldred, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, that's a real shame about not being able to get Shieldred down. Yeah, we'll just take out the blue player here. We will draw a card. And getting to reanimate, alright. So that could maybe be Consecrated Sphinx. We're up to 20 life. This Uro has done a hell of a lot of work for us. Uh, maybe even animate the Elish Norn. Then we could go Elish Norn and Shieldred and force them to sacrifice the Shadricks potentially. Yeah, we're going to lose a lot of life here, but I think that's the way to go. So, getting rid of those Inklings, knocking their commander down to a 0-3. Let's test them for some removal. Yep, and they're going to use their removal here on their own... their own Elish Norn. Uh, Vona's Hunger. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you have the city's blessing, sacrifices half the creatures they control. Okay. So, if that's the best they've got, that's fine. We can just sacrifice the Uro. Lightning Greaves still lands. And then we could just replay the Uro here, but we've got Lightning Greaves anyway, so let's make use of our mana. Be as efficient as we can here. And we'll throw down our Shieldred. Try and protect that as well, because I'd rather have Shieldred in play at this point. So now our opponent's hopefully going to struggle on card draw, and I think we finally managed to get out from underneath both of our opponents here. So they do get an inkling, thanks to the Shadricks going down. The yeah, the dramatic finale, not actually the worst card. Changed my tune on it a little bit. Uh, the inkling doesn't stay in play, of course, thanks to the Elish Norn. But yeah, four mana anthem with upside, it's yeah, not the worst thing. Ha, <laughs> there is a damnation, so not gonna be reanimating things with Shieldred, unfortunately. One card left in their hand. We've got the Oubliette left for the Shadricks, if they go for that again. Oh, instead it is a Grave Titan. Zero cards in hand. So, uh, let's blow up this thing, so that their tokens aren't as big and scary as they might be. Yeah, Grave Titan puts us in a tricky spot now. We're going to have to spin the top during the upkeep, definitely. And on top it is Lands and an Echo of Eons. Certainly don't want to give my opponent any cards. So, is it just Rejuvenating Springs here? Yeah, we'll draw into that. And now it's Darmia. We're going to attempt to refill our hand here. Going to be able to block some of the zombies, thankfully. And let's go for the Oubliette. I don't like it, but Oubliette onto the Grave Titan, maybe? 
Yeah, because they're just going to make too many tokens. Still one mana shy. Ah, that's annoying. I played out a tap land in Rejuvenating Springs. If I'd gone for the for the forest, then we could have got Uro out again this turn. Yeah, so that's a pretty bad mistake. But we'll go Oubliette onto the Grave Titan. And then not turning in sideways with Darmia. We are just keeping our fingers crossed that we don't get absolutely trampled next turn. Need to remember the Vault of the Archangel, actually. We're going to have to take the damage from the zombie tokens, because they can give Death Touch. Looks like it's Shadrick's coming back into play. And there it is. No haste, thankfully, but if they want to go for the plus counters, they could they could give us the plus counters, give themselves an inkling. And they dropped a planes there, so that was the land for the turn. Just doing the Vault of the Archangel right now. So not looking at giving themselves an inkling, although it couldn't have swung in anyway. Putting a plus counter on our Darmia, they go up by one card and gonna hit us for four here because their creatures do have Death Touch and Life Link. And it doesn't actually matter about the Sensei's top because we're going to draw seven cards here anyway. <laughs> Getting to a damnation of our own, a Maelstrom Pulse for the zombie tokens could be useful. Obviously the Echo of Eons there as well. Um, let's fix our green mana with a Yavamaya. Uh, cryptic Command doesn't particularly help us, I don't think. Could tap out our opponent, I suppose. Yeah, let's go through to combat here. Oh, actually, I oh, completely forgot about the Euro. Oh, I'm making some mistakes here. So, hitting our opponent for 5 Commander damage. We will go for the Euro now, which I should have done before now. Escaping Euro. Throw the Bayou into play. Go back up to 12. Uh, Mystic Remora. Yeah, it's just more card draw for us, so I might as well throw that out. And then we're holding on to our instant speed stuff. Oh, actually, Maelstrom Pulse isn't instant speed. Oh, well, we'll draw three extra cards next turn. Maybe would have gone for the Maelstrom Pulse if I'd remembered that. Ideally, our opponent would... Well, they drop a land, so... I was going to say, ideally, they will cast something here. Idol of Oblivion, we certainly don't want. We'll draw a card with Mystic Remora, I imagine. And they do let us draw, that is Terastodon. So we'll counter and tap out their creatures. So that takes a combat step away from them. They might get themselves an inkling here, but don't mind swinging into one of those. Castle Lockthwain is going to draw them a card as well. Might go for Terastodon next turn. And we can blow up some of these problem lands. Um, yeah... Getting rid of the Mana Vault and the Castle would be really good. Shadrix is being pointed at us for some plus counters. We can actually go to Rassadon, blow up three of their lands and then Maelstrom Pulse onto the Elephants, can't we? So they've got two cards in hand here, through to the second main. Now that is a Sword of Hearth and Home, that is definitely one to blow up with the Terastodon. We draw into Flooded Grove. Equipping the Sword of Hearth and Home onto the Shadrix will give it protection from green. And we get to look at some fresh cards with the Sensei's Divining Top, which is another spell that has done a lot of work for us. Uh, a Grave Titan of our own with a Lightning Greaves is really good. Um, so it's Reliquary Tower, Narset, Grave Titan. And then we will pay for the Mystic Remora here, I think. Oh, I forgot about the Darmia. So we'll draw just one card with Darmia. Cumulative upkeep for the Mystic Remora, I will pay for. So we'll drop ourselves a Flooded Grove, we'll get another land into play with the Euro. Um, Terastodon first, I think. We'll get rid of the Castle, the Vault of the Archangel, and the Sword, like I said. Tapping down the land for Black Mana before it gets blown up. And then we can go Maelstrom Pulse onto those Elephant Tokens to get them out of the way. And I think we've got exactly enough on our opponent if they don't have removal in their hands. So we'll put the Greaves onto the Elephant. Looks like they might have something. <laughs> wow, the last card in their hand. So that's a snuff out. Still making use of the Mystic Remora. I suppose we could have spun the top there. Draw into the Narset, of course. So snuff out going on to the Terastodon. So now we've got a chance to go for the Grave Titan instead. I think we've got the mana for that. Yep, just about six mana into Grave Titan. And now we've got some blockers for their zombies. I'll land as much damage onto them as possible here. Turn everything in sideways. Our opponent gets another turn here. And uh, might as well just go for Reliquary Tower. Doesn't 
really matter which land we go for. So getting our opponent down to three, this will be a comeback for the ages if they manage to do anything to us here. Yeah, they just dropped a land, so unfortunately for them they have top decked a few lands over the past turn or two. Can draw themselves another card for a board wipe here. Being forced to put plus counters on all of our stuff, like I said they are aiming for the board wipe anyway. So Shadrick's turning in towards us. And, uh, oh yeah, I just remembered that the mono blue player held a cyclonic rift all that time and went down because of it. Yeah, forgot about that, but Drug Mountain saying it GG to us. Big thank you to him for supporting the channel. Uh, managed to draw himself into a Deathbringer Liege. But it doesn't matter, we only have to get through with one zombie here. So we'll see out of curiosity which cards we draw into with the uh, Darmia. Uh, Nezahal, a Seal of Primordium, and Oko is a means of getting rid of the Shadricks. So paying the two into the Mystic Remora, and we'll go straight through to combat here. Turn everything in sideways at my opponent. They don't have any cards in hand, so no reason not to. Draw into Kemrith's Transformation with the Uro, and manage to take our opponent down. So, yeah, it was looking pretty sketchy for a while there, but managed to just claw it back. Could have gone either way there, a little bit more luck on Drug Mount inside, and uh, yeah, I think he definitely could have taken it from us. Didn't really dive into Shadrick's all that much when it first came out, due to the copious amounts of sets that have been coming out in 2021. Um, but yeah, this is a really good list by the looks of it. I'd be intrigued to see it in the Discord if Drug Mountain wouldn't mind. I think the absolute all-star of that game was Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. I don't think we would have been anywhere close to staying in that game if it wasn't for the life gain on this, as well as the ramp, as well as the damage. It just does absolutely everything for not very much mana. So, yeah, really went well thanks to Uro as well. Hopefully you all enjoyed that one. Be sure to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you did. Please share it with your friends as well if you think they would like it. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.